Before beginning this chapter, in this chapter and the next two, there's a glaring problem with the heroes being able to use the Dragon Balls whenever to revive the heroes that are killed. For the sake of these timelines being wackier and allowing the villains to win, I just ignored the possibility of the heroes using the Dragon Balls. I tried to address this problem by having Goku stop Bulma and the others from using the Dragon Balls in time, but even then, there's nothing to stop them from using them after the heroes are defeated. Anyway, in the timeline where Bobbidi is still alive to win, it starts right after Boo has awoken. The change would be that Deborah and Boo don't get into a fight again against each other. Instead, the Bora and Boo get into a fight against Gohan and Shin, with Boo fighting Gohan and Shin fighting the Bora. When Boo blasts away Gohan like he normally does, Shin wouldn't be able to save him. So, Gohan would be killed by this, which leaves Shin to fight the Bora and Boo alone. Of course, Bobbidi would order the two to kill Shin, so he would be killed too. Things continue as per usual, up until the point Goku was going to stop Bulma and the others from using the Dragon Balls. This time, Goku arrives in time to stop them, so they don't make the first wish of reviving the people killed by Vegeta and Boo. This way, they can hold off on reviving everyone until after Boo is defeated. Regardless, things go the same up until Goku's fight with Boo. Bobbidi had already started to realize Boo was becoming more independent, so it never made sense to me why he would call Boo things like fat to anger him more. For a timeline for Bobbidi to win, he realizes that if he keeps pushing Boo around like that, he might be killed, so he doesn't call Boo these names. This means that Bobbidi isn't killed, so Boo would never go on to do things like make a house and help the blind kid. Instead, they would be going around and killing more humans while waiting waiting the two days for the strong fighter Goku promised. From there, the training of Goten and Trunks to fuse goes the same as usual at first. After Goku returns to Otherworld, no one else can take over the training of Goten and Trunks. Since Piccolo is still a statue right now, this likely means that they would turn into a failed fusion, but with Piccolo not there to correct them, he would still rush off to fight Boo. When Gotenks first rushed off to fight Boo in the manga, he came back beaten. However, with Bobbidi alive, he likely wouldn't let Boo allow Gotenks to escape, and they would be weaker since they are a failed fusion this time. So, Boo would kill Gotenks, since this was before they trained in the hyperbolic time chamber to get stronger. Since this would have been the stronger fighter that Goku promised, the heroes wouldn't stand a chance of fighting Boo. Hercule would still have tried to defeat defeat Boo, but it likely ends badly for Hercule since Bobbidi would have Boo kill him. When the remaining heroes try to challenge Boo, they would be defeated and killed as well. From there, Bobbidi would have Boo continue to wipe out the inhabitants of the Earth. In the manga, Bobbidi mentioned that it would only take five days for them to wipe out all the inhabitants of Earth. After that, Bobbidi would be able to use Boo and his other henchmen to take over the universe like he desired. This means that his organization would spread across the entire universe, so more people would fall under his mind control. This chapter will be about Majin Buu, but unlike the last chapter, this chapter will not have Bobbidi being alive to win. For this timeline to work, it would have to have similar changes to the last chapter. The major change is that Shin doesn't manage to save Gohan, so he is killed. Shin is also killed by Buu before Deborah manages to attack Buu. Things can go relatively the same as normal, though Goku has managed to stop the heroes from using the Dragon Balls in time. The only reason this needs to happen is so that any of the heroes aren't revived, since Gohan would be able to train and defeat Buu if he was brought back. Eventually, Goku still has his fight with Buu, but Buu then kills Bobbidi afterwards. Things from there would go essentially the same, but this time, when Gotenks tries to confront Boo the second time, he still defuses into Goten and Trunks. In this timeline, he doesn't let Goten and Trunks escape, since he believes they are the strong fighters Goku told him about, that without them being fused together, they would easily be killed. After this, he might still make a promise to Hercule not to kill and destroy, but if he keeps his promise, it's hard to say. In this timeline, so that Buddha is split into two, he's the one to attack the people that had shot B instead of Hercule. This would mean they are likely killed, since Boo wouldn't hold back. He then heals B, which causes him to calm down. With the shooters now dead, they couldn't shoot Hercule, so Boo doesn't get angry enough to split into two. Anyway, it's hard to say if Boo would keep his word about not killing, but since he still has his evil part inside, he would eventually get bored and start to destroy again. The other heroes might challenge Boo to try and stop him, but they are killed too. Boo would still wipe out the inhabitants of the Earth, but the only difference would be he might not wipe out Hercule and Videl, which, while that could be interesting to see, that would be a sad timeline for them. If that did happen, they'd essentially be stuck dealing with Boo over time. Of course, they could try to train the fight him, but it likely wouldn't work. So, Boo would continue to wreak havoc across the universe, while Hercule and Videl are stuck dealing with him when he is on Earth to visit them. This is kind of a joke chapter again that wasn't likely to have happened. During Majin Vegeta's fight with Goku, he threatened to kill him, but he likely wouldn't have done so. In this timeline, the change is that he follows through on this threat. Because of Bobbidi using his powers on Vegeta, when Goku is caught off guard and about to give Vegeta the Sensu Beam, he is then blasted and killed by Vegeta instead of being knocked out. However, this would shock Vegeta himself. 
Z didn't plan to kill Goku, though, with his goals surpassing Kakarot seemingly fulfilled, this would leave Vegeta without any goals. This could also be what weakens his pride enough to allow Bobbity to gain full control over Vegeta, which, with Bobbity in complete control over Vegeta, he wouldn't get into a fight with Boo. Deborah might not get into a fight with Boo either, just like in the earlier chapter about Bobbity and Boo winning. Instead, Bobbity would use Boo, Vegeta, and Deborah to kill the heroes. This might be easier to do than one might think, so Strunks and Goten might be tricked by Vegeta into believing he's on their side, as he then kills them. And with Deborah still alive, Piccolo and Krillin are still statues, so there aren't many major heroes that can stand up to them. Without Vegeta going against Boo to cause a distraction, Shin and Gohan would be killed as well. From there, assuming Vegeta and Boo never got into a fight for some reason, it would go like the chapter where Bobbity and Boo won, though Vegeta would be along with them for their killing of hers inhabitants in the conquest of the universe. Assuming he still has some aspects of his original personality, there might be some internal struggle for the first couple of years since he is taking orders from another again, and without a goal to make him want to fight against his control, he would eventually get used to it. After all, Goku's rivalry with Vegeta drove many of his decisions, Then, since Goku is permanently dead in this timeline, there isn't that motivation at all anymore, so the internal struggle would eventually be gone for good, as Vegeta falls completely under Bobbity's control. This means that the universe would be taken down by Bobbity, Boo, Vegeta, and Deborah.